it going to be sexual? Is there some sexual connotation to it? Um, why did you call it that? So I had all types of reactions, and the reason we came up with this name, and I'm going to backtrack a little bit, is in November, there were some few that actually attended the last workshop, and that last workshop was called the Conscious Creators Workshop, which was based on the secret or similar ideas, the law of attraction, the positive, negative energy, um, and those concepts based on self-development and how one can better their life. And so we, we actually had a great day. It was a very interesting place to be. And when we got out of the day, we did a post-brief. And as we were sitting there doing the post-brief, I turned around and at some point said, you know what, I think we can do this differently. Because everything that's out there is based on the same sort of path. And Jason said, yeah, you know what, I don't know if I'd want to do another workshop like that, which is going to fall into what everybody else is doing. I said, you know what, I think I'm a little bit tired of the language. Hi. Hi. Leah? Leah. Leah, welcome. Um, and because of the language and because of the way people think and because of the way the self-development is going, do we want to approach it in the same way? Do we want to be different? And if we want to be different, we're going to question a lot of the concepts that are out there. And that's okay, because questioning is not a bad thing. And looking at it from a different viewpoint is being different. So as we started to speak, we we went and we started de-threading. That's the word I'm going to use. We actually started de-threading all the concepts that are out there and what the self-development workshops cater to and what they offer and what they say and how they say it. And so as we started to de-thread, we realized, okay, we need to do something different on the basis that is it about the journey out there? Is it about what we do here? Is it about... Maybe we can push that door a little bit. Sorry. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Okay, this is a break over there. Right there, no. I didn't see that. Oh, we It's right there. <laughs> okay, so as we, as we move forward, we kept talking, we kept talking, we kept drilling, we kept de-threading. We started to get very excited about the fact that we could look at it from another viewpoint. And as we moved, this was we met, I think, January or February, as we moved forward, it got more and more exciting because we were just taking things apart. We were just pulling them apart. And we said, yeah, we've got something here. So we want to do something different. So what is the reason you're here today is because we want, we want to be able to say to you that there is another way. What is your way? We're not here to tell you what it is. You're going to have to find it for yourself. So if anyone came here to get answers, it ain't happening. It ain't happening from us. It's happening from you. I had a lady call me and said, right, tell me what I'm going to get from your workshop. What is it that you're offering and what is it that I'm going to come out with? And I said to her, I said, do you honestly think that I'm arrogant enough to think that I know what you're going to get? I don't live in your mind. I don't know how you think. I don't know about your life experiences. I don't know how you thread your thoughts together. So how would I be able to tell you what you're going to get? And how can it be that people coming into a room carrying their own bags of experience would leave with the same experience. It's not possible because we're all unique. We have the threads that run through us, but we are all unique. So this is how we decided, all right, we want to say something in a different way and saying it in a different way means we want to put it out differently. And putting it out differently meant <laughs> using different language. And so we came up with, all right, we want to get people to masturbate their thoughts. And initially, it was masturbate, as in masturbate. How are we going to get them to actually 
do the monster baiting in the head. But then we had to be sensible and change it so that it would be acceptable to the public because I don't think going out there and actually using master bait would have had the same impact. So that's how we came to the title. I wanted to share that a little bit. Now when we talk about language, all the language that's used out there is about how to attract, where, what type of energy something carries. So it has to be either positive or negative. There's no neutrality in anything. There's no acceptance of the fact that things are just the way they are. And the self-development world has created a huge industry in giving the public a lot of great ideas. We are not putting down the self-development industry at all. I mean, my journey has been, or my trip has been go, to go through these uh, areas, read the books, attend the workshops, and then sit back and think, okay, what works for me? And I would walk a certain idea for a little while, and then, hmm, okay, that's done, next. I think arriving at the stage now where it doesn't really matter what I've achieved or what anyone's achieved. It's where are we at now and where are we going from this point and how are we going there? If we keep doing the same thing and getting the same results, how do we change that? How do we change that? Would anyone like to share what it is that they think about this kind of stuff? Would anyone like to share? No? Maybe it's a little early. We'll get into that a little bit later. Okay, that's fine. Uh, can I just ask you? Sure. You, you mentioned something very, very um, interesting to me. That it was um, looking at the world from a different perspective. Yes. And it's like I always do that. Because um, when, when, um, whenever like someone says like, oh, like this, or whenever someone says like, this is so, like this girl's crazy in the head, or this girl is like insane, uh, or this, this is like weird, I always want to say like, no, she's not weird, she just has issues, and you should like, you should look beyond that and see you know, see all the other good qualities, and if all the other good qualities are enough to, and if all the other good qualities are wonderful, then you should just ignore the issue. You know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. You're right. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. So what does baiting mean? What does baiting mean? Did anyone give that a thought? Yes, please, Sandra. Debate. Debate? Great. And what were you debating? Yeah, the voice in my head. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, that's, that's an interesting point you brought up, because what, what is the voice in your head? Uh, kind of this or this, no, no, this, no, this, no, this, no. <laughs> and, which, and which one do you listen to? I said to myself, no, the first thought was, is the best, always. Oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And it's the same debate in my head. Do you have more than one voice? I have the same voice, same different thing. Mm -hmm. I know that I know that your mind, the purpose of your mind is to find the other way. Work on it that all the time. <laughs> and how to find the balance for me. And where does it come from? Oh. See, that's that's once once we start to understand where it may come from then we can start to understand it. Yes, Jude? Um, talk uh, coming from outside. Uh, it's not necessarily from inside. It's thing that we heard about, like other people talk, other people fears that we take for ourselves. That's when we our parents who, who don't do this or don't do that, be careful. That's when we other people insecurities as well. Um, you know, and it's just mixed with our own thoughts. So being able to master a thought, that's for me, that will be able 
to be the master of our thought um, and our own thought, like being able to very know what is our personal belief, what's good for us, instead of putting things from other people that work for them, but not necessarily work for us. Absolutely. And also because, adding to what you've shared, the fact that we associate everything with the memories that are stored in our mind. So if we have an example of, say we were, we were somewhere where we broke a window. Okay, we broke a window and there was, it wasn't the right thing to do and that memory stayed with us. The next time something like that happens, we will associate whatever we remember with that memory. So the memory association affects us to such a degree that we don't even realize how much we associate our entire lives with memory. So does memory serve us? Does really memory serve us? Do all our past experiences serve us? Is it helpful to relate to our past? And depending, because when I was two and something happened, I broke the window, and now I'm older, it's the same situation, but different. Um, it's it's still different. The emotion, the emotion might come back from my two years old experience, and this is where I have to be more mature. And understand that that memory is past. It was with another person, it was in another time, it cannot come back, it cannot... And memory is remembered on the basis that it's not really what it was. We memorize things in a way that doesn't really help us. Because we magnify things and that doesn't really help us. So does memory really help us? So I'm going to leave you with that question on how we're impacted by aspects of ourselves. And anything we say, please understand that this is just another concept. We're not teaching, we're facilitating, we're asking you to think and maybe not even think. We're, at, we're asking that you just look at life from another place, from a place that you may not have visited before. And mostly what happens is we're told, all right, you know what happened to you, what your mother did to you when you were three years old? You know, we have to take you somewhere and we have to talk to you about it and we have to help you erase that memory or we have to help you take you through therapy or take you through counseling or get you to do your own counseling to overcome that. Whereas if you thought about it from the point of view that it's something that happened at a time that I cannot change, that doesn't matter, and I am not going to give it the importance because it's there. This is a saying that some of you might have heard. Uh, there's an African tribe that says, the past is in front of us. The future is behind us. And the reason they say that is because the past is actually what we can see because we've experienced it. But think about yourself as you're driving, okay? If you're driving and you put your car in reverse gear based on this theory, as you moved away from your past, because you have to be able to see it, right? As you move away from it, what happens? it gets blurrier and blurrier and blurrier and then your memory will start creating ideas about the memory that don't even exist. Mm -hmm. So how does memory serve? Memory doesn't serve. And especially with events in our lives that were not happy events. How do we hang on to those? Why? What is humanity about? Because we hang on to those that have how come we don't talk about the happy memories? Mm -hmm. What is it?